Hi everyone and welcome back. Okay, so today we're going to be doing a comparison between the Dale Rowney Aquafine smooth paper and the textured paper. If you follow this channel, you'll already know I've done a review and a painting demonstration on the textured paper and I thoroughly recommend it and thoroughly enjoy using it. So this turned up yesterday, I've had a little practice on it and I've done two side by side paintings for you to look at today as well. So the two paintings that I've actually done um, are identical, they're just little sketches, I'll show you them in, in just a second. Um, but what I'd done, I'd done it on an A5 actually, I took a sheet of paper from each, cut it down the middle, had a little mess about, you know, just literally dabbing paint around, just um, doing a few little wet into wet experiments and things like that on both, and just comparing them just to see what the papers you know do and what they look like how they behave etc then on the other two uh, pieces of a5 it's like i said on two little paintings uh, which i'll show you in just a sec but first of all both of these pads are absolutely identical in every way they're both a4 um both 140 pound in weight acid free 50 sheets blah 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 the only difference is the texture that's all um now as you can see this these are both jumbo pads 50 sheets I just want you to know that you can actually buy them in pads of 12 which you know isn't very expensive at all but it is um, a better buy I think to buy the jumbo pads because it does work out cheaper in the long run um, but it's entirely up to you if you just wanted to try you know maybe 12 sheets and not have the the expense of the larger packs that would probably be a good idea just to try it out um, just to see if you like it Okay, so I'll just move these two out of the way. So like I say, they're nothing special. The, the whole purpose of this really is to try and expose any weaknesses in the paper. You know, nothing more, nothing less. I just wanted to do two very simple, quick, loose, um, kind of mess around sketches and do several t techniques on each paper just to see how to stand up to it and just to see generally the overall look of the difference between the two um, textures. So just looking at those two, um, you probably can't tell in the camera actually which is which, but or you, you may be able to, I mean the results might be that obvious, I don't know. But the top one, this one is the textured paper and this one is the smooth paper. They were both done wet into wet style and I've used glazing techniques, layering techniques, um, trying to rub out some of the paint to get back to white paper. Um, I've even kind of re-wetted the sky after I painted it in first of all, re-wet over it again and then drop some dark clouds in just to see if the paper would pull up, um, to see if I'd get cauliflowers or back runs or if it just generally make a mess or if it would work or not and it seems to have worked okay. But if I just bring these a little bit closer, um, I'm probably going to have to tilt them on the side so I can get them both in the frame. I mean you can see the texture there. A little bit better you know if I do that this one looks you know quite grainy looking in fact from the last review I even said that this kind of makes your paints look like they're granulating even when they're not you know and that's to do with the, um, the surface of the paper you do get kind of a kind of a speckly effect with the wet into wet technique you know the paint seems to kind of puddle up in the little dimples and kind of dry um, like that, you know, leaving the higher points of the paper a little bit lighter. So it does give that kind of granulation look um, overall to the painting. But this one, the smooth one, which I was testing out today, um, it's it's good um, for certain styles. I mean, I've got to be honest and say that my painting style is, you know, 95% landscapes. Um, so generally, I use 95% textured paper whether it be not or well I should say cold pressed or rough texture really that's really the only two papers I really work on other than the times when I do like the butterfly illustrations and things like that um, anything small that needs a lot of detail that wouldn't look good with this kind of grainy texture then I go for a smoother surface um, but the trouble is I've always found um, with these smoother papers particularly like in the student range um, and the only other paper that I've actually got at the minute is Bockingford um, smooth um, 
it's very comparable to this, but there, there are differences. One of the things I noticed with this, it can dry a little bit patchy. I don't know if you can kind of see that. I mean, that was supposed to be a flat layer. You know, there's several layers applied over the mountain and that final one starting to get a bit patchy. I mean, it kind of works in the painting. You know, it looks like a little bit of texture on the cliffs there, but that wasn't the intention. I was trying to get a smooth flat wash. And you can also see, if I just get the pencil on this, these, I mean, these aren't pencil outlines here. This is where the paint has kind of ran out to the edges of the wash and left a darker line, particularly on this one just here. The others are not too bad, but I did notice that that was happening a little bit, um, you know, if the paint went on a little bit too wet. Also, it's fairly prone to cauliflowers and runbacks, things like that. Um, although I was very lucky with this, this painting, nothing really happened. I was expecting it to happen in the sky. On a few previous mess arounds that I'd done, it really did cauliflower. So you've kind of got to get used to the amount of water that you're using, um, you know, when you're using a smooth paper. You know, it's, it's going to be different to what you can get away with on a rougher surface. So you just kind of have to adjust your painting style a little bit, you know, so that you can actually um, get on a little bit better with these smoother surfaces. Now, one really positive thing about this, again, it dried really flat and there was minimum buckling throughout the, paper, uh, throughout the painting, even though the paper was completely saturated with water at the start. Um, and it, it was the same with the, the rough texture as well. That was, you know, another good point for that. Another good thing about this, the paint will lift off nice and cleanly. You know, if you want to get a clean damp brush and just pull out a few highlights, you can do that really easy on this paper. Um, not so much on the textured one, but with that said, you can still get away with doing it on the textured one, but it's more difficult if you're using a wet into wet technique. What I noticed was, um, if I was to wet one half of the paper and drop loads of paint and pigments in there, let it dry and then try and erase out some of the paint with a damp brush. It was very difficult, very difficult to do. And you find yourself pressing harder with the brush so the bristles splay out more so you get a more wider um, mark there. And you can't really get the super thin lines um, you know, that, that you can with sort of a, a fine chisel edge brush or something like that on this kind of paper. Um, but on the other hand, if you were to just leave the paper dry and put a wash of colour down there and let that dry, you can erase it quite cleanly, in fact. I think what's happening is when the paper's wet, you know, the fibres swell up and you put that pigment on there and it really soaks in and because it's wet it takes a, you know, a longer time to dry than it would you know, if you just put one wash of paint on there on a dry piece. So it's got more time to kind of soak into the grain of the paper and then when it dries, you know, it's really quite hard to kind of scrub and lift any off. Um, but not so with this. It doesn't matter if it's wet into wet or just, a, you know, a small wash of colour. You can erase it really easily. Now, sometimes that can be a bit of a problem because when you want to glaze, you know, if the paint's going to lift really easily um, and you want to glaze, often, you know, the underlayers can lift up. But I found with this paper, you have actually got enough working time to literally, you know, coat the whole paper again, go over it with a glaze over what you've already painted um, without any lifting occurring or anything like that. You have got a good amount of working time there for layering and glazing and that kind of thing without any paint actually pulling up. Um, so that's good, you know, that worked out well. So the only real problem that I found with this was, like I say, the patchiness of it. Um, it's quite hard to get a nice flat wash and then layer up again um, and use lots and lots of water and things like that because that paper just doesn't suit that style. You really need to uh, be a lot lighter with the washes, not put so much water on there um, and just be careful in that way. Now this paper, as I was using it, I thought this would be fantastic for the pen and wash artists. Um, and next time I do a painting on this, I think what I'm actually going to do is maybe use some watercolour pencils or just some regular pencils. Because this texture, this smooth texture, will lend itself perfectly for that kind of application. Whereas this 
textured paper. I mean, the, Dale and Rowney are calling this um, cold pressed, which is more of a medium texture. I would say that this is actually rough or somewhere in between rough and a cold pressed. It's definitely rough, definitely rougher than most of the cold pressed papers that I've used. But anyway, that generally, you know, the rough textured paper doesn't lend itself very well to colored pencil work. And sometimes, depending which colored pencil, um, watercolor pencils you're using, if you've got one that completely dissolves, it's not too bad. But if you've got one of those watercolor pencils that leaves a little bit of the shading mark behind, you know, even when it's dissolved, it's gonna pick up some of the grain pattern on this. That might be a bonus, you know, it might help you. You might be looking for that kind of texture, but if you're looking for like a smooth area, a smooth finish with watercolor pencils, this isn't the paper for that, but this one would be. And like I say, I've had a little go actually with pen and wash on this, and it's it's very acceptable for that. It, um, it takes ink and line work really well, um, and like I say, keep the washes nice and light and you can you get some really nice effects with it. So overall, I think for a student, um, a beginner that doesn't really, that can't afford or that doesn't really want to pay, you know, the prices of a cotton paper, I think this is really a good option for you. Um, I mean, I've got to say, and I said it in the last one, I always recommend, you know, to buy the best quality paper you can buy. It's one of the things I don't skimp on. Um, even though I use some of the cheaper papers, they suit the style, um, you know, that I paint in. Like Bockingford, it's brilliant for pencil and wash and things like that. But when I'm doing a large watercolour and it's a pure watercolour, I'll probably go for something like Arches or Saunders or something like that. Something that's going to allow me a lot more... Uh, freedom and it's going to behave better to wetter washes and things like that whereas these behave okay but you've just not got some of the working time that you have on the cotton papers you know these can absorb the paper uh, absorb the paper <laughs> I can't talk absorb the paint and the water very quickly um, and although they stay damp for a while you're not really getting the wet into wet, you know, bursting out techniques so much with them, whereas you will do on arches and saunders and those kind of papers. So it's a different game altogether using a cellulose paper to a um, cotton paper. And cotton papers are very, very forgiving papers, and that's why I always recommend them for beginners because you'll get results a lot faster on them. Um, you know, and they are professional quality papers, but they do cost a lot of money. Um, and I totally understand a beginner walking into an art shop and not wanting to pay those prices until they've learnt to mix paint, they've learnt um, you know, their colour selection on their palettes and they've got a little bit of experience before they actually splash out on 100% cotton paper. I totally get it, I really do. So we need something you know, to practice on which is not going to give us any problems or give us any false illusions of what a watercolour should look like. You know, this, this paper behaves like watercolour paper, like any cellulose paper. You know, it's, it's a very good quality one. Um, so I think this one, for the students and for beginners, is absolutely ideal. In fact, when I ordered the smooth um, pad of paper, I ordered another 50 block of uh, the textured paper as well. That's how much I'm enjoying it. You know, if I was to do a, a finished watercolour on arches or saunders, I would use this paper first to practice the colours, practice the layouts, colour harmonies, um, and just to get a general idea of the painting first. But that's not just that's not to say it's just a practice paper. It's not. You can do nice finished paintings on it. Um, I mean, the, the very last video I posted of the church in watercolour. Okay, it wasn't a brilliant painting. It wasn't one of my best, but you can see how the you know the paint behaved on there and how you can actually get very nice results with it so it's not just you know a cheap old nasty paper or anything it's a very very usable um, watercolor paper at an excellent price so definitely give this one um, a look if you're you know looking for this kind of watercoloring on a budget style approach to your work you won't be disappointed I'm pretty certain of that and like I say if you want to do a little bit of pen and wash or color pencil work Go for the smooth texture and um, you'll get good results with that one too. So I hope that's been helpful to you and I hope it's gave you some information on deciding which one would be the best one for you. So thanks very much for watching. 
and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.